डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज इमेज कंपरेशन पार्ट थ्री इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस फिडिलिटी क्राइटेरिया एंट्रॉपी एंड इमेज कंपरेशन मॉडल नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट फिडिलिटी क्राइटेरिया द रिमूवल ऑफ इरिलेवेंट विजुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन इन्वॉल्व अ लॉस ऑफ रियल और क्वांटिटेटिव इमेज इन्फॉर्मेशन वी नीड अ वेज टू मेजर दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन लॉस two classes of fidelity criteria are used first is objective fidelity criteria and second is subjective fidelity criteria objective fidelity criteria when information loss can be expressed as a mathematical function of the input image and output compressed image various measures are there to measure the difference between the original image and the compressed image such as root mean square mean square error peak signal to noise ratio and signal to noise ratio this measures calculates the error between the two images now here f of x y is the input image which is uncompressed and after removing the psychovisual redundancy we are getting the lossy compression image that is indicated by f cap x y that is output compressed image in case of lossless compression f of x y is equal to f dash of f cap of x y but in lossy compression technique this is not the same so we require to measure that how much error is there between the input that is uncompressed image and the compressed image the error between f of x y and f cap x y is represented by this but we can't take simply e of x y because sometimes error can be positive and sometimes error can be negative and they can cancel each other that's why we are going for the different types of matrix image is two dimensional so total error between the two image of size is m by n e of x y is equal to summation x equal to 0 m minus 1 y equal to 0 n minus 1 and difference between the compressed image and the uncompressed image but this measure is not useful so we are going for root mean square now in this word all definition is given mean is nothing but 1 by m n that is total number of pixels in an image we are taking the root and square so first we are taking the difference we are making the square and again we are making the square root so this is nothing but the root mean square formula so this is one of the matrix to find out the error between the uncompressed image and compressed image next is mean square error mean square error so here mean is there square is there so that is nothing but mean square error so formula is ms is equal to 1 by mn into summation x equal to 0 m minus 1 y equal to 0 n minus 1 this is for row and this is for each column and we are taking the difference between the compressed and uncompressed image and their square so basically this is nothing but the error so we are taking the error square divided by total number of pixel a lower msc value indicates a smaller difference between the original and compressed image suggesting better quality of conversely a higher msc value indicates a larger difference suggesting more significant noise or artifacts introduced during a processing it is generally used with the peak signal to noise ratio and psnr is derived from msc and expressed in decibel higher psnr value indicates a better image quality peak signal to noise ratio so this is the formula for peak signal to noise ratio here psnr is equal to 10 into log so here log with respect to base 10 is used maximum pixel value divided by msc we already seen in previous slide that how to calculate the mean square error now here maximum pixel value is depend upon the type of image for example if image is 8 bpp that is to represent each pixel if we are using 8 bits then maximum value can be possible is 255 and if image is 3 bits so maximum value can be possible as 7 so it comes as a 7 so this is nothing but the max pixel value and in this way we are calculating the psnr the psnr acceptable for image and video compression is between 30 and db and where higher is always better now we can see that psnr of 0 10 db 20 db here we get at most compression but at the same time quality is reduces and psnr of 40 to 30 mm -hmm. is acceptable in range so as psnr reduces the quality of the image gets degraded similar to psnr one of the major is again is ek a signal to noise ratio that is snr this is not psnr this is snr and in the snr we take the in the numerator whatever that compressed image square divided by the difference of compressed and uncompressed image square now this is all about the 
objective fidelity criteria where we are using a mathematical function to find out the error between the compressed and uncompressed image. Subjective fidelity criteria is not like this. It is depends on user and the uh, whatever the user will make the quality of the image by seeing the directly image. Now see this. This is the image. So we can easily say that the first two images are better and the third and fourth is degraded. If we compare the third and fourth image, the fourth is more degraded because the compression is more. So when we are using more compression, that is nothing but lossy compression, then at that time we are removing some of the data permanently which will result in the loss of quality of the image. So here in subjective fidelity criteria, we are not calculating the error, but we are assigning these grades. So six grades are there and their meaning. So here this six is not compulsory. We can use any type, but this is the standard value. So one to six and rating is like this. And for this rating, this description is there. So this is shown to the user and user has to give the rating for that particular image. So for example, here the user can give the rating of one to three for first two images, but for sixth Im uh, for fourth image, it will give unwatchable because degradation is more and for this image the user may give the impression as either poor or inferior so this is nothing but for subjective fidelity criteria next topic is entropy it measures randomness in an image entropy is zero for no randomness and increase for randomness image entropy plays a crucial role in image compression technique it helps us to understand how efficiently an image can be compressed without significant information loss. It helps to achieve the best possible balance between the file size reduction and image quality preservation. Image with higher entropy means lot of details and variations in color and intensities are there. That means we can achieve uh, less compression and by calculating the entropy, we can estimate the potential compression ratio that can be achieved without compromising on the image quality. Different compression algorithm works better with varying level of image complexity. Knowing the entropy allows us to choose the most suitable compression method for specific image. For example, techniques like Huffman encoding and run length encoding performs better with low entropy image containing the repetitive patterns. Entropy helps us to determine the optimal compression rate for an image. A higher compression rate reduces file size but can introduce the artifacts. By analyzing the entropy, we can find out the midpoint between achieving the smaller size and maintaining the acceptable image quality. So we can decide the trade-off between these two factors by using the concept of entropy. Now the entropy formula H is equal to minus K equal to 0 to L minus 1. So total number of gray labels are L. They are start from 0 to L minus 1. This is nothing but the probability of RK. RK is nothing but number of pixels having that kth gray level. So then we are taking in the entropy formula that is probability of each color into the log of, log of probability of each color. L average that is L average is nothing but k equal to 0 to L minus 1 that is number of bits required to represent that color into probability of that color. Redundancy is R is equal to L average minus H. Here when L average equal to h at that time r is equal to 0 that is no redundancy in an image so we can't achieve the compression but if l if there is a difference between the l average minus h at that time redundancy is present and we can go for the compression entropy calculation first order and second order first order targets only coding redundancy while second order second order targets the interpixel redundancy we will see with the example now this is the example of 5 by 5 that is total 25 pixels are in an image and here first we will see the distribution of the pixel 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55 they are repeated for this. If we see the variation of this image we can find out that pixel repetition is there and they are with a constant that is almost most of the pixels are repeated for 4 or 5 times. Now we calculate the probability. Then this is intensity values, frequencies, probability. If we don't take the consideration of that 
the frequency of occurrence of the color and if we use a fixed length encoding that is to encode each pixel if we use 8 bits that is nothing but fixed length encoding so we are using 0 0.16 into 8 0 0.2 into 8 in this way and if we make the summation we are getting the 8 that indicates what total L average bits required to encode each pixel so here we are not taking the advantage that some pixels are repeated more and some pixels are not repeated so instead of this if we apply the Huffman encoding on this data we will get the variable length so for this we to represent 50 values we can use 3 bits for representing the 51 and 54 we can use the 3 bits and for the remaining we are getting the 3 bits so if we use only this much bits then we are getting the answer 2.6 which is not it which is approximately equal to 3 that is it indicates that uh, 3 bits are required to represent this image if we calculate the entropy then entropy we always calculate with respect to base 2 so probability is 0.16 into log of 0.16 with respect to base 2 is minus 0 0.42 in this way we calculate for all the pixel and we are getting the entropy as 2.47 so when we take the difference between this 8 minus 2.47 difference is more that is redundancy is present and when we take the when we apply the variable length encoding that is to capture the inter, uh, to capture the coding redundancy we are getting the answer 3 so when we subtract 2.6 minus 2.47 the redundancy answer is less so the first order entropy calculation is targets the coding redundancy now for on this image we apply the interpixel redundancy and we will see the calculation again for the second order now reducing the interpixel redundancy we take the difference between the adjacent neighbors because we can see that adjacent neighbors are very much similar so for simplicity we are going row wise first pixel at is as it is next we subtract the first from previous that is current from previous so 50 minus 51 is minus 1 50 minus 50 is 50 50 minus 50 is 50 so in this way we calculate for the second row 52 as it is then 50 minus 51 minus 52 51 minus 51 though in this way we calculate so after applying the interpixel redundancy we can find out that we are getting the continuous runs and the most of the values are uh, same that is nothing but what the randomness is reduces compared to first image that is by taking the difference between the adjacent pixel we capture the interpixel redundancy now this is the resultant image now we again apply the uh, variable length encoding so here 0 is repeated for 15 times probability is 0 0.6 minus 1 is repeated for 5 times and probability is 0 0.2 and for this the count is 1 because they are rarely occur so probability is 0.04 so if here also if we use a fixed length encoding we require again 8 bits and if we apply the Huffman encoding at that time to represent 0 we are using only 1 bit to represent minus 1 we are using 2 bits to represent one of the probabilities we require 3 bits and for remaining we are getting the 5 bits and as for 4 these 5 values are there for 1 pixel we get 3 bits and for remaining we get 5 and that 5 is repeated for 4 times so it is multiplied by 4 so if we add this we are getting the value that is 1.92 or close it to that is we require only 2 pixel to represent this uh, image so when we capture only the coding redundancy at that time we require the 3 bits to represent that image but after if we capture the interpixel redundancy and after that when we apply the binary encoding to capture the coding redundancy we are getting only two that is means what in this image both redundancies are present so first we capture the interpixel redundancy and then we go for the coding redundancy and if we see the answer of the entropy so entropy is nothing but probability into log of that probability as this is repeated for five times five times it is multiplied by five and when we see this answer we are getting the answer 1.82 now here if we again take the difference between this 8 with respect to this difference is more means what redundancies are present and if this difference 1.92 minus 1.84 it indicates that we difference is less that is redundancy is very less present in an image and we capture almost all redundancy so actually when we go for the comparison first we take the first order calculation in the first order calculation if we get the reduced bits we will try with the 
next level calculation which will capture the interpixel redundancy and if we get the success in the second order we can prefer this answer because in that image coding as well as interpixel redundancy is present i have already published the videos on redundancies and image please watch that video to understand this concept on this slide analyzing the first order only gives a minimum possible comparison difference between the higher order estimates of entropy and the first order estimate indicates the present of interpixel redundancy therefore we need to apply some transformation deal with the interpixel redundancy image comparison model encoder and input image f of xy is fed to the encoder which creates a set of symbol from the input data decoder is exactly opposite that is encoded information is fed into decoder where reconstructed output image f cap xy is generated so here first we apply the mapper which will capture the interpixel redundancy if you are using lossy compression technique quantizer is there which permanently loss the data and if we are not if we are using lossless compression technique the quantizer the quantizer step is absent after that we are applying the symbol coder that is nothing but using the coding redundancy so here we first apply the interpixel redundancy and then that is we try to reduce the interpixel redundancy and after that we try to reduce the coding redundancy and after that encoded data is passed to the decoder decoder does exactly opposite work that is symbol decoder and then again inverse mapper and we get the f cap of xy in case of lossy compression technique quantizer is present and f of xy is not equal to f cap xy in case of lossless compression technique quantizer is absent and f of xy is equal to f dash of f cap of xy mapper it transform the input image to reduce interpixel redundancy in the input image by either applying the techniques from special domain or frequency domain it is a reversible operation quantizer is present only for lossy compression technique reduces the accuracy of the mapper's output reduces the psychovigil redundancy of the input image not reversible operation it must be omitted when we are using lossless compression technique symbol encoder creates a fixed or variable length code to represent the quantizer output maps the output in accordance with the code in most cases variable length code is used and it is a reversible operation so in the next video of huffman encoding you will easily understand how that mapper and symbol encoder works decoder it contains two components symbol decoder and inverse mapper they are exactly opposite they perform reverse order the inverse operation of the encoder symbol encoder and mapper because quantization results is irreversible information loss an inverse quantizer block is not included in the general decoder model because it does the permanent loss so it can't be recovered so this step is absent in the decoder step so this is nothing but all about the basic of the image compression that is nothing but entropy image compression model